If there's one film that proves that the fiery rhetoric of the internet is not just limited to the troubled productions of big Hollywood blockbusters, I believe this may be it. Internet comedian and filmmaker James Rolfe set out four years ago to finally bring his beloved creation, the foul-mouthed, nostalgia-critiquing, angry video game nerd, to the big screen. In the process, delivering a super review of the infamous E.T. video game for Atari, as well as satisfying his own urges to direct and write a feature of his own, a dream of his since childhood. Rolf stars as the titular character who becomes embroiled in a gigantic conspiracy when he is forced into reviewing the E.T. sequel, and by proxy, the original. After suffering a horrific nightmare where his fans have been exploited and zombified by the game, the nerd sets out on a mission to debunk the whole E.T. landfill legend alongside his trusty cameraman and female sponsor. The American military, a mad scientist, aliens and even kaiju soon come into the mix. It's almost impossible to really talk about this film without at least mentioning the internet's reaction to not just the finished product but also its production. After all, the internet is why the nerd even exists to begin with, and most of how this film materialized is tied really heavily to it. It's like trying to discuss, say, Heaven's Gate without talking about the end of the second Hollywood Golden Age. So, what exactly is the big deal here? Well, Rolf used an Indiegogo campaign to help fund this film, asking for only around $75,000 originally, but receiving a plump sum of nearly three and a half hundred thousand. Not exactly putting Avatar to shame, but still a fairly sizable ordeal, and this then led into debates about the way the money was being used, with pre-production being slower than would be expected and not helped by Rolf's disastrous sponsoring of the infamous Cheetah Men 2 NES restoration campaign. People wondered if this was just some elaborate con like the former experience, and if Rolf was in the right to rely on the fans' own money, knowing they would then have to pay again once the film came out. Suffice it to say, this is an issue with many shades of grey, and even getting into production didn't remedy any doubts, as did neither a trailer that debuted with no proper release date back in 2012. I won't go further because there's plenty of videos on the topic, and to spend longer on this would be to derail from the main subject of this review. So now that it's here, and the reaction has been not overly warm to put it politely, I must weigh in and answer the question. Did Rolf create a film that, when divorced from all that context, can hold its own? Right off the bat, no one can fault the film's ambitions for such a meagre budget. We get plenty of action, a variety of locations spanning from the nerds native Pennsylvania to the New Mexico desert and the lights of Vegas, and a hefty helping of old school practical effects in the various creatures, robots, and even gore sprinkled throughout the film. Anyone who believes that limited funds cannot allow for a proper sense of scope and visible artistry should see this film as proof to the contrary. Rolf's often spoken love for old horror and B-movies shines through here. The over-the-top tackiness, with moments of legitimate effort, is perfectly captured as Rolf meshes conspiracy theories, alien invasion, and video game history into one loud and crass package. His actors also share in this mentality with the likes of Time Winners as a nutty scientist and Steven Mendel as a mad military commander in his own mini-tank wheelchair are the highlights, relishing in their big, fancy archetypes. Rolf himself is fine, and certainly delivering on the loud outburst the character is known for, though his limitations do show at points, especially during a really poorly choreographed fight scene with some military surgeons. Rolf just feels really klutzy in this scene, being rather slow moving and often just coming across like he's following rehearsed cues instead of fighting for his life in character against doctors who want to cut him up. In fact, that description is not entirely too different from how I feel about the film's writing and the film as a whole. It's a hodgepodge of video game satire, lowbrow gags not entirely far off from the Happy Madison school of comedy, and then a hefty helping of movie throwbacks and references to Rolf's own show. The third, as mentioned before, is probably where the film is at its strongest, at least for those in the know, and Rolf does a decent job setting up the nerd in this universe. Granted, moments like having the camera dwell on Mike Mattei and Kyle Justin, two of his collaborators, during the Alamogordo convention sequence, for quite a few seconds just feels like blatant signposting and really wouldn't make much sense to non-fans. 
Plus, even as a B-film, some of the green screen is really poor with a very obvious tint to the actors and the windows of vehicles that they are driving in. And most of the robots look cheap to a fault, being little more than guys in cardboard boxes. There's low budget charm, and then there's just plain lazy. The second and third are where the problems really start, as they almost feel like they're fighting each other. The juvenile humor isn't all that well meshed with the satire of both video game culture as well as the culture surrounding the nerd himself, which in and of itself would have plenty of material for a feature film. Things like calling the ET2 developer Cockburn, or portraying his own fans as bumbling, though not entirely non-well-meaning louts, kind of deflates whatever point Rolf and his co-writer Kevin Finn may have been trying to make when it's that overt. It even has to resort to the token big moral speech at the end, just in case you weren't clear what the point is. And unlike, say, a Mel Brooks satire, the lowbrow gags play out as exactly as you think they will. There's no farting symphony a la Blazing Saddles, or any kind of attempt to push the puerile humor outside the box to at least compensate for its nature. Somebody vomits? They do, and that's it. That's all you get. And even then, the satire just isn't all that insightful or biting. Gee, developers are greedy and exploit their fan bases who in and of themselves are not always the most rational of people. I really needed a two hour movie to tell me that in 2014. Especially considering the kind of audience that this film is obviously aimed at will be more than well aware of the issues, and probably have gone over them a few hundred times by now. It's just so odd that a film that celebrates trashy cinema would then stop several times throughout to try and be something more meaningful when it worked fine just being a celebration of trash and geek culture and where Rolf's skills obviously shine the most. It's a little jarring swallowing what is ostensibly a relevant message in the midst of goofy aliens and increasingly mad general with a running gag of having his parts shot off, government conspiracies and even a big kaiju fight at the end. And Rolf just isn't experienced enough yet to hit that sweet spot of balancing all these elements. Knowing what you are is a motto he should have adopted more often here, because when the film is cheesy is when it's at its most fun, and when it tries to go bigger is when the cracks start to show. In the end, contrary to some of Rolf's own claims, the movie is very much a fan's only affair. It's a nerd episode blown up into a feature, and with it comes the pros and cons of that. Beyond that, I can't really recommend it to non-fans outside of maybe being a curio of the whole Kickstarter boom and what all the fuss was about, as well as maybe looking at how to get good production values on a tight budget. Most of the references will be lost on you, and what's here won't win you over to Rolf's side or his character, and frankly you're better off just watching the smaller, tighter episodes on YouTube if you want to really understand what the whole shindig is with him. I applaud Rolf for trying, but well, even as a fan, I have to be honest about my sentiments. And that's that. Thank you all for watching, and till next time.